Right. Hi, everybody. Um, I am going to try and talk you through my analysis of this GQ um, front cover. Uh, so you get a sense of how you could go about <clears throat> deconstructing it uh, and trying to make connections between what we see on the cover and who the audience is intended to be, who's, who's being targeted, and perhaps what can be said about um, uh, social society, uh, the, the sort of cultural context uh, that the, the front cover exists in. Um, to start with, uh, I want to establish who I believe the audience of GQ is. Um, I'm going to argue that they're male, sort of in their 20s, 30s, predominantly, uh, white collar workers. So uh, you're looking at um, professionals, young professionals, uh, people who work in, uh, that they're, they're, they're not laborers, they're, they're not manual workers, so to speak. Um, they're relatively affluent, uh, but they're, they're certainly consumers of uh, objects and um, products um, and subscribe to uh, a capitalist philosophy, I guess. Um, and they're body conscious and um, appearance uh, is important to them, uh, aesthetics are important to them in the way they look, in the way that they're perceived by others. Okay, so now let's start going through the, looking at the front cover and trying to pick out some of the features that have led me to, to that audience uh, and some other interesting things we could say about it. I'll start off by looking at the colour scheme. Um, obviously you've got but for me, anyway, the three colors, the, the, the colors that stand out here are, are black and red. Um, for me, these, these carry connotations of red, black color scheme. For me, so I, I associate, well, it they, they carries connotations of strength, masculinity. Um, I think the red, particularly, that has got a, a, a dynamic quality to it um, that's associated with speed and uh, energy uh, and so for me for me the colors have been chosen because there there's something quite powerful about them and I think that the color works hand in hand uh, with the image this central image this main focus of the front cover which is um, Dwayne Johnson also known as the rock uh, now obviously he's a star he's a celebrity and as a celebrity, he is associated with those same qualities of strength, masculinity, um, dynam bit dynamis dynamism, uh, being dyma dynamic, um, powerful uh, figure. Uh, the fact that we've got this close up of him, I think that's worth making a note of that. We've got a, it's a close up. I think that's it's probably in contrast to a lot of women's magazines. Um, I've just funny enough been looking at a lot of um, cosmopolitan front covers, and most of those the, the shots of women on the front cover are medium shots or long shots, and we're getting a sense of their whole body. Uh, but here we've got close up of uh, Dwayne Johnson. I wonder if that is um, a feature of all. All male magazines. It's a convention. It's worth having a look at that. Um, anyway, we've got a close-up of him, uh, and what's obviously being foregrounded is this huge bicep. Uh, you know, it's, it's unmissable, isn't it? Um, obviously, the bicep is a signifier, isn't it? It's a symbol of strength and uh, brute force, um, and it sort of emphasises uh, Dwayne Johnson's physicality. Um, as does the name, The Rock, with Rock being in capitals, so sort of capitalised uh, rock, uh, you know, and obviously everything that we associate with rocks, again, with strength. Um, it's interesting uh, that the exclamation mark, and I had to look this up because I didn't, I didn't really understand it, um, has this sort of bull's head as, a, as this stop underneath the, 
a straight line. Um, and that's apparently a reference to uh, the rock's iconic tattoo. It looks like it's a bull to me. Um, again, traditionally, you know, that masculine uh, animal. Um, and I think sort of this image of the rock, this close up image of him, uh, is primarily designed to engage the primary readers of this magazine, which are, like I said, young men who are body conscious, uh, who are aspiring to be this idealized masculine figure, which Dwayne Johnson serves to represent. Um, the magazine is, is making sure that anybody looking at it is under no illusion that masculinity and physical strength are closely aligned. To be a man is to be physically strong. Um, I think the image, the color scheme, uh, serve to communicate that to us. It, the, 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 the rock's um, facial expression, uh, if you look at that, uh, sort of the eyes, uh, the eye contact is uh, in di directly looking at the reader. Um, yeah, it's engaging, but it also oozes confidence, power. There's also something serious in his expression. This isn't, you know, he's not a joke figure. He's a serious, powerful, dynamic, uh, brooding almost masculine figure. So yeah, he comes to represent to me uh, an idealized man. Um, in a sense, he, if you, a couple of lessons ago, um, you're introduced to the term spornosexual. In a sense, he's a, a representative of that uh, type of person. Somebody who, who his body, his physique is um, something he uses uh, as a tool to, to uh, make gains in his professional and personal life. Um, OK, so what else can we say about this magazine? Um, a couple of things you, you might want to zoom in on down this right hand side. Uh, first of all, when it talks about um, this ideal beach watch, let's come down here. I talked earlier about there being consumers and subscribing to this capitalist philosophy or ideology. Uh, and these two little phrases here the, you know, the essential wellness gadgets, your ideal beach watch, the best for under £300. I mean, for me, this speaks a little bit of the audience as well. Um, if you're the type of person who is who buys a watch, a beach watch, uh, a watch specifically for the beach, it it suggests that you have uh, quite a bit of income uh, to spend uh, because it's clearly a luxury, quite frivolous object. Um, three hundred pounds is it? is a reasonable amount of money it says under 300 pounds but presumably they're going to be up towards that end so this isn't for the ultra rich this isn't for the the elite within society from a wealth point of view the gq is targeting like i said these white collar workers um that have got disposable income that do care about objects and owning things um to the point where they might buy a watch especially with the beach in mind. Uh, and, and I think that, that the, this bit of it says the essential well gadgets also chimes with that in that gadgets are, we, we associate gadgets with tech, we associate tech with men. Uh, and it's it, it just all buying into this whole, this whole philosophy, uh, ideology of consumerism, consume, consume. And I think, you know, I suppose magazines buy into that quite heavily. Um, this phrase up here, man up, is an interesting phrase, I think. Um, it's certainly reinforcing um, socio-historical stereotypes about what it is to be a man. It's, all, it's, it's almost regressive like, to man up, to be, be this traditional man, you know, stiff, to, to stiff upper lip, repress your emotions. Um, so that that's something I think could something could be said about. Uh, and in a sense, you know, this how to be a man, this the whole magazine's functioning as some kind of self-help lifestyle guide for for these young men, 20s and 30s, who want to become 
they want to move closer to what the perfect male is. And this magazine is going to give them advice on how to do it. It's going to show them how to be uh, a man. Uh, and it's not just in, 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 you know, like if you buy the right gadgets, if you, if, if you own the right object, if you're physically strong and confident and powerful uh, like The Rock. Um, there's also this element to, to being um, the perfect man. Uh, this is called a flash button, apparently. Uh, that this sort of circular thing that, that picks out a feature from the magazine. Uh, and the, the, the thing that this flash button's picking out is uh, the, the star manual. Uh, the, this magazine is a star manual. Um, it, it's really representative of modern man, isn't it? That, you know, that, that the new masculinity, or it's not even that new, is it going back to what metrosexuality? Um, the idea that men uh, now care about their appearance, they now care about their style and their looks. Uh, and their aesthetics and so that feeds into that element of what the perfect man is as well they care about their style they care about how they what they look like um and what they wear they care about what objects they own they care about how they physically look uh, so yeah all of those things sort of feed into my audience um i think what there's a couple of th other things I, i've picked out this little, I don't know what they're called, strap liney thing down at the bottom, the extraordinary truth behind the Viola Beach tragedy. You probably don't know who Viola Beach are, but they were abandoned. I think they had a car accident or they died on tour. I want to say in Scandinavia somewhere, but I can't really remember. Um, but but this here is like a, a newsworthy topic, isn't it? It's, it's serious journalism. It's unlike your ideal beach watch or how to be a man. This, this is serious journalism um, about a serious issue where people have died in controversial circumstances. So what's that? What, what think about what that's doing to the magazine? It's broadening the content for its readers, um, and it, it it's moving the the product GQ into a more sophisticated area. Um, it's not an entirely superficial, frivolous silly magazine uh, it also engages with serious topics of the day serious stories of the day so it, it, it's authentic journalism is what it's trying to signal um, i think it's interesting uh, from a representation point of view that the front cover of this magazine has a black cover star um, he's clearly a role model he's clearly an aspirational figure um, so you could say something there about uh, the cultural context that the cover appears in. Um, he's an image of a successful man. Uh, he's wealthy, he's masculine, he's ambitious. Um, so I suppose that speaks of the social, societal expectations of that men now, to have it all, uh, must must be like the rock in that they must be good looking, uh, they must own own the right objects and products. They should be strong, but they should also be successful because there's, there's an emphasis here on him being a bankable star. Um, money here is synonymous with success, it would seem. And so once again, the magazine seems to be feeding into this capitalist capitalist uh, ideology. Now, what's important in life? Money, objects, looking good. Um, being a man, uh, and that's what my audience uh, subscribe to, uh, or GQ's audience subscribe to, uh, and want and aspire to. And um, I think that's all I can think of to say about it, to be honest. Oh, uh, you might want to, the, the GQ, obviously, if you're going to look at GQ magazines, it's probably worth talking about the title. GQ is. Um, short for an abbreviation of an initialism of a gentleman's quarterly which what could you say about that uh, both i suppose both the words gentleman and quarterly have got are quite seem quite old-fashioned nowadays um in a sense uh they seem to be associated with class and sophistication to me i think that's why they've chosen that why they've stuck with that title over the years um which again sort of targets these white collar aspirational workers who want to become or appear or be 
or see themselves as sophisticated, classy. Um, yeah, so you'd be able to say that about any GQ front cover that you look at. So it's a nice, easy point to remember. Um, yeah, okay, I think that's where I've run out of ideas. Um, if once you've watched this and read this, uh, read this, once you've watched this and listened to this, could you please go on to the collab zone where Migna is now? Uh, I don't know how she's doing this when she hasn't heard what I've got to say about it yet. Um, and listen to what I've got to say and put in here anything that I've missed out, couldn't get right, you, you don't think I've got quite right or could have been expanded on. Okay.